Malaysia and Thailand. Through his years of preaching, he has given countless souls practical guidance and deep inspiration. Taking sannyas in Mayapur in 1994 from His Holiness Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj did not mean much of a change in his lifestyle, since Maharaj has always been strict in his sadhana. Whoever gets to know Maharaj admires and respects his sincere and faithful practice of chanting the holy names of the Lord. He truly walks his talk. Maharaj has been teaching with the Mayapur Institute since its inception. We would like to welcome Maharaj to Iskon Hyderabad and also especially Maharaj has served here as the temple president from 1981 to 86 in that period. And devotees were telling that Maharaj was one of the very um, pioneering devotees and making everything happen very nicely. We would like to welcome Maharaj to Iskon Hyderabad by Lord Jandi three times. Hari Bol! Hari Bol! Hari Bol! All right, thank you very much. So today we're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4. We're reading Canto 4, chapter number 18 or 15, 19. Chapter number 19, King Pritu's 100 Horse Sacrifices. Text number 23. No? Yeah? Okay. Yani Rupani Jagrehe Yani Rupani Jagrehe Indro Haya Jahir Shaya Tani papashya kandani, lingam kandami hochyate, yani rupani jagrehe, indrohaya jahirshaya, tani papashya kandani, Lingam kanda mihochyate Yani rupani jagrehe Indrohaya jahirshaya Tani papashya kandani Lingam kanda mihochyate Yani, all those which Rupani forms Jagrehe accepted Indra, the King of Heaven, Haya, the horse Jahirshaya, with a desire to steal Tani. All those, those papashya of, of sinful activities, kandani, kandani signs, signs, lingam, lingam the, symbol, the symbol, kandam, kandam the word, kanda, kanda iha, iha, here, here 
Uchate is said. Translation. Whatever different forms Indra assumed as a mendicant because of his desire to seize the horse were symbols of atheistic philosophy. You can repeat. Whatever different forms Indra assumed as a mendicant because of his desire to seize the horse were symbols of atheistic philosophy. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. According to Vedic civilization, sannyasa is one of the essential items in the program of the Varna Ashram institution. One should accept sannyas according to the parampara system of the acharyas. At the present moment, however, many so-called sannyasis or mendicants have no understanding of God consciousness. Such sannyasa was introduced by Indra because of his jealousy of Maharaj Prithu. And what he introduced is again appearing in the age of Kali. Practically, none of the sannyasis in this age are bona fide. No one can introduce any new system into the Vedic way of life. If one does so out of malice, he is to be known as a pashandi or atheist. In the Vaishnava Tantra, it is said, Yes, tu Narayanam Devam Brahma Rudradi Daivatai Samat Vainaiva Viksheta Tapashandi Bhavadruvam. Although it is forbidden, there are many Pashandis who coin terms like Daridra Narayan and Swami Narayan. Although not even such demigods as Brahma and Shiva can be equal to Narayan. Omma jnana timarandasya jnananjana shalakaya chaksurun militanyena tasmai shri gurave namaha vancha kaupatarubhyasya kripa sindhu bhayevacha Patita nam pavane bio vaishnavi bio namo nama jai shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shri advaita gadadha shri vasadi gor bhaktavinda hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama Rama, Rama, Hare, Hare. So this chapter is telling of the encounter between Indra and Maharaj Prithu. Maharaj Prithu was ruling the earth and he desired to perform Ashwamedha Yagyas. And he had performed 99 Ashwamedha Yagyas. So when he was preparing for the 100th sacrifice, at that time Lord Indra became very worried. He became worried about losing his position because somebody can perform 100 Ashwamedha Yagyas, they're considered very qualified, they can even become the king of heaven. So Indra King Indra is the king of heaven, he's very attached to his position. So he did not want that Maharaj Prithu would perform the 100th Aswamedha Yagya. Therefore, Indra used different tricks to try to stop him. And one of the tricks which he used was Indra put on the dress of a renunciate. He disguised himself as a sannyasi. So 
it's mentioned here that whatever different attempts Indra made to disguise himself, it was a different type of atheistic philosophy. Now, a sannyasi is actually meant to present the principles of religion. As Srila Prabhupada says in the beginning of the purport, sannyas is an important part of the system of varna and ashram. We know there are four ashrams, brahmacharya, grihastha, vanaprastha and sannyasa. So there's a progression there. Generally, brahmacharya is student life. Young people in the beginning of life, they will study and they go and live in the ashram of the guru and they will study there. And then after their education, then they will be told by the guru what to do. They may be sent to go and enter into family life. So they become, most people become grihastas. We see in the world that, that most people are married. They may not actually be grihastas, they're more grihamedis than grihastas. In other words, they're more on the material platform and their business is just simply sense gratification. But those who are spiritually inclined and who are faithful to the Vedic culture, they will be grihastas and they will live with their family for the sake of making spiritual advancement. So that is there. You have to understand there are two kinds of householders. One is in the material platform, the grihamedi. Their business is just simply envy of others. And their business is just simply sense gratification. They accept a wife, they, ex they have children, but it's all for their sense gratification, not for their spiritual purification. Actually, family life is meant for purification. It's meant for helping a person to progress to a higher level of consciousness. And one should then go on from the Grihastha life, one should then enter into the Vanaprastha or retired life. From married life, then after married life one should retire. This is called Vanaprastha. The, now the scriptures say, Pancha Sodvam Vanam Brajet. From the age of 50, one should enter into the retired ashram, the retired, the Vanaprastha. Ideally, you should go to the forest. But in the Kali Yuga, in this age, to go to the forest is not possible. Pra practically, we see forests are destroyed. We've, all, we've knocked down all the forests. So where to go? We, actually, what you should do to retire, you should go to the Holy Dham. And you should go to the, the temples like Vrindavan and Mayapur. Or at least you should take shelter of the ISKCON society. And you should come to the ISKCON society and you should render voluntary service. Voluntary service means you don't get a salary. You don't get paid, but you come and do service. You help in the temple and live here and take part in chanting and so on. Like that, that is Vanaprastha. And then those who are more qualified, they go on to sannyas. Actually, family life is meant to be progressive, that after being in family life, then you move into the vanaprastha ashram, retired life. And then after some period of retirement, then the person who is qualified and who is desirous can also become a sannyasi. Now, in the Kali Yuga, it's difficult for people to take sannyas. Actually, the real purpose of sannyas 
is to completely detach oneself from the material world. But the, the sannyas in, nowadays in the Kali Yuga, the sannyas is awarded with the, with the ideal that the, the person will propagate religious principles everywhere and he will make propaganda to others to instill with them the need of spiritual life. He'll go everywhere traveling and preaching, giving discourses and holding programs and festivals, just like our own spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada. He was, a, he was in family life, and he had his wife, he had five children, and then at a certain point, he retired from that family life. And he went to live in Vrindavan. And he was living in Vrindavan. And he was doing some writing work. And he was writing articles. And he was thinking about how he could propagate Krishna consciousness. Because he, would, he was an initiated uh, by Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada. And he had the order from Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada that he should try to teach whatever he had learned. He should try to teach it to others. So this is the principle of Krishna consciousness. So Srila Prabhupada then understood that it was necessary for him that to, to fully dedicate himself to the preaching work he had to accept sannyasa, the renounced order of life. Now, as vanaprastha, you can still keep connection with your wife. You can still be at home even. You can live at home with your wife. But there's no question of any uh, connection. You've already, you're already into old age, so you're... You have, you're not thinking of having more children and you're not, you're not earning. You should give up your job if you're working or you have a, a business. You give that up. Either you give it to your children or you just give it up and you take up full-time spiritual activities. But with sannyas, you have to go out from the home. You have to leave the house. And you don't see the wife anymore. You leave and you go out and you should go away from the home and travel and preach and distribute the message of Krishna consciousness. We should understand that this is an important part of the Vedic society. We need Sannyasis, there should be this class of people, but they should be properly qualified. They should be properly educated in the scriptures, and they should be able to present the philosophy of Krishna consciousness to others. Srila Prabhupada comments here in this purport how often in the Kali Yuga, in this age, Many sannyasis have no God consciousness. They're actually even atheistic. And they present all kinds of bogus philosophies. So that is very harmful. The position of sannyas is meant for people to propagate God consciousness. But there are many people who are in the dress of sannyas but they have no God consciousness. They have no understanding of God. And they will present all kinds of bogus, atheistic philosophies. They will say things like, work is worship. That is not a scriptural statement. Krishna never says anywhere that work is worship. But if you give the results of your work, then you can worship Krishna. But it's not that simply work, karm, do, uh, karm bin uh, puja, 
<laughs> no, work is not worship. Worship is here in the temple. That is worship. And you're performing your duty and giving the results of your work for the pleasure of the Lord. That can be worship. But it's not just anybody can work. And by doing work, you're worshiping. This a bogus, atheistic philosophy. Then there is another bogus philosophy which the people say that uh, service, service to God is service to man. That by serving man, you're serving God. And they say that we, we, should, we should simply feed the poor. And, well, that's, that's not spiritual. If we just simply do welfare work, just si simply feed the poor people. All right, there's a need to feed the poor people, but that is not spiritual. That is a materialistic social activity. That's the business of governments and so on to arrange like that, that poor people should be fed. But that's not the business of a sannyasi. The business of a sannyasi is to deliver the message of God consciousness and to teach people what is the real goal of life. And it's not enough to just simply feed poor people. That is simply materialistic activity. It is not on the spiritual platform. We may be distributing, just like we do programs, we have sometimes a thing called Food for Life, and we distribute prasadam. Just like at Rathiatra, and maybe even yesterday with Radhastami, we distribute prasadam. That's all right. We distribute prasadam. But we don't make a point of just going to the poor people to give food. The, the, the wealthy people also need prasadam. The wealthy people also need Krishna's mercy. It's not only the poor people who are in need of mercy. Everyone needs Krishna's mercy. We need to go everywhere and give everyone prasadam and try to awaken them to God consciousness. So we want you to understand that Today, there are many common philosophies which are simply atheistic, which they're against the teachings of Scripture, and they don't recognize God. It's the business of sannyasis to preach sanatan dharma, not to just simply open a, open a kitchen and feed the poor. It's not the business of a sannyasi to simply open a mundane school and provide mundane education for children. It's not the business of a sannyasi to arrange marriages for the young girls who have no husband. This is not the business of sannyasis. Sannyasi's business is to preach and to enlighten people about the goal of life, the purpose of life. And if we don't do that, if we compromise and take up welfare activities, then the whole position of sannyas is, has no more meaning, practically. It becomes meaningless. So it, it's very unfortunate that in the Kali Yuga, in this, so time, these, at the times that we are in today, that there is a lot of atheistic philosophy, but it's in the guise of religion. Just like Indra, he disguised himself as a sannyasi. Sannyasis meant to be renounced, they're meant to be spiritual people, and they're meant to teach the, the, the spiritual values. Indra put on the dress of a sannyasi. But he did not have the intention of a sanya. Rather, his intention was simply to steal the horse, which Maharaj Prithu was going to sacrifice. 
So that was very shameful of Indra to do such a thing. To, to degrade the position of the sannyasi. The sannyasis are the head of the social body. They're meant to be the spiritual authorities. But we see today in the, in the dress of sannyasis, people are doing, they're engaging in sinful activities. They will eat everything. They eat meat, they eat fish, they keep pigs, they keep chickens. And you can go, there's, there's ashrams like that. They have a pig farm, they have chicken farm, they're eating everything. And, they're, and at the same time they claim they're sannyasis. It's ludicrous, it's ridiculous. The business of the sannyas is to propagate the highest knowledge, to deliver people from birth and death, not to encourage them in their sinful activities. So there is a need for genuine sannyasis. A Krishna conscious society tries to provide that, but it's difficult. In Srila Prabhupada's time, Srila Prabhupada initiated young men as sannyasis. He gave them the chance that they could do some service for Krishna. And they did some service, but they found it very difficult to maintain. So this is a problem, that sometimes people find it difficult to maintain their vows. Just like in our Krishna consciousness movement, we have diksha, we give initiation. And at the time of initiation, people promise to follow four principles. No meat, fish and eggs, no intoxication, no gambling, no illicit sex. And every day chanting 16 rounds. So at the time of initiation, people make these vows. But often, after some time, people can't keep up the vow. And they break the vows. They're not able to follow. At one point, they were very serious and very committed. No, I want to do this. I'm going to do it. But sometimes, after some time, they go away. They leave up. They give a drift away from Krishna consciousness. So this is a problem. This is a pro this, it's like that here in India, and it's even more common outside of India. <laughs> we encourage people to come to Krishna consciousness, and they, they're, at one point they're very enthused, but somehow after some time they lose their enthusiasm, and they're not able to keep up the standards. The, there was one young man, he was approaching his guru and he wanted to take the vows of renunciation. So guru said to him, he said, he said, now you want to renounce. But he said, in another 20 years, will you still want to renounce? He was a young man. And so the young man had to consider. He didn't think about it. Where will I be in another 20 years? No, generally sannyas is not for young men. Within our own Krishna consciousness movement, there are some rules and regulations now about who could take sannyas. In Srila Prabhupada's time, Srila Prabhupada gave sannyas to young people. He gave them the chance to be sannyasis. He knew it would be difficult for them, but there was a need for spiritual leaders. And so Srila Prabhupada gave some people the chance that they could take the position and they could be sannyasis. Not many survived, but Srila Prabhupada took that risk. Just like one time, it was in the year 1976. Srila Prabhupada was in Mayapur and it, 
people had come for the Gore Purnima festival and Srila Prabhupada awarded sannyas to six or seven young men, all western bodied, some were from South America, and anyway he awarded them sannyas. So one of Prabhupada's friends was there, an elderly man, Prabhupada's age, one of his friends. So his Prabhupada's friend said to him, he said, he said, Prabhupada, they're all very young. And Prabhupada said, yes, but he said, if we wait till they're old, what can they do? Right? Because you're an old man, when you get old, what can you do? You're not so able to do very much. So this was Prabhupada's reasoning anyway. At the same time, Prabhupada knew it would be very difficult for them to keep the vows of sannyas. And Prabhupada himself took sannyas when he was, uh, well, he was maybe 60 when he took sannyas. He was not young, but he took uh, uh, And he, he also said, it is painstaking. It's difficult. It's not so easy thing. Because he had his family and he had left the family, gone away from them, living alone. And so not very easy. And then actually, after, not shortly after he took sannyas, Srila Prabhupada was in the Vrindavan and he was gored by a bull. So he was, his health was ser seriously injured. So he was really put to task. Now, sometimes it, when you get like that, you think, oh, maybe I'll go home. <laughs> My family will take care of me. But anyway, Srila Prabhupada maintained he didn't go home, he stayed. And he went on and he went to America and he began the Krishna consciousness movement. So in this way, he showed the real glory of sannyas. That the business of sannyasi is to go everywhere, not just simply where there will be nice prasadam, where there will be a nice room to stay, where everything will be comfortable. But there's a need to go places where there's no Krishna consciousness. And Srila Prabhupada did that. He went to America. There were no temples, there was no Krishna consciousness. He went there and he introduced it to them. So that is the real business of the sannyasi, to go where there is no Krishna consciousness. There was one time, there was one sannyasi, a young American sannyasi, he had come to Vrindavan. And he told Prabhupada, he said, oh, Prabhupada, he said, I love this Vrindavan. He said, I just want to stay here and, and be in Vrindavan. But Prabhupada said to him, he said, you are a sannyasi. Your business is to give Vrindavan to others. Your business is not just to enjoy Vrindavan yourself, but you should go out and go and travel and preach and give Vrindavan to others. So that, that is important, you see. Sometimes people would even criticize Srila Prabhupada. So Prabhupada would tell us how we could deal with it. We, he said, we should, anybody who criticizes Prabhupada, we, we would ask them, how many miles did you travel to preach Krishna consciousness? How many books did you publish about Krishna consciousness? How many temples did you open? How many disciples did you initiate? This is the business of the sannyasi. The business of the sannyasi is not to just simply sit and do some austerities. That is not really Vaishnava sannyasi. There are two kinds of sannyasi. There is the Tridandi sannyasi and the Ekadandi sannyasi. Ekadandi sannyas is in the line of Shankaracharya. So the Mayavadi sannyasis, they take sannyas to renounce the world. They say Brahman Satyam Jagat Mitya. Brahman is truth. The material world is false. And they give up 
everything. They renounce everything. So that is Ekadandi Sanya. But in Krishna consciousness, we don't have Ekadandi Sanyasis. We have three Dandi Sanyasis, Vaishnava Sanyasis. They are three Dandi Sanyasis. They carry three rods, indicating body, mind, and words, all in the service of Krishna. And they don't take sannyas to give up the world, but they take sannyas to utilize everything in the service of Krishna. That is better than giving up everything, utilizing everything for the service of Krishna. That is the real sannyas. Just like this house, this, this property here, we have, they've made it such a beautiful temple now. You see, this, this is the business of sannyasi. Prabhupada came here, he opened the temple, 1976. Pularedi had given the land, the sweet shops just across the road there, and he gave the land here, and the devotees, 1976, they opened the temple, and it was very simple. It wasn't like it is today. It's so beautiful today. It was very simple, very basic, but we opened the temple. And now you can see how it's developed. It's so beautiful and so many facilities, and we have, you have your Dwarkapuri Hall, and you have your Samskar Hall, and you have a Govinders restaurant, and you so many things. So you can see how Krishna consciousness is a dynamic affair. It is not static. It's not just, oh, put the temple here and then keep and then and then just let it be there. No, but we're we're people are here and they're preaching and they're propagating, making more and more propaganda for bigger and bigger festivals. Just like yesterday, you celebrated Radhastami, and so many people came, right? Well, what was it? 3,000 people came. So very wonderful. You have a big crowd coming for the festival, and so many people got Krishna consciousness. And I see the deities today. I thought maybe you were having Radhastami today, because the deities look so beautiful, and the altar is just so well decorated. I thought, wow, are they having radastomy today? <laughs> and I never saw such beautiful dresses. They're very wonderful. So this is the business, to utilize everything, not for our sense gratification, but for the pleasure of Krishna and to give Krishna consciousness to others. So that is required. We want that. Everyone should be sannyasi in that sense. Sannyasi is not just, it's not just a dress. It's not just a, a title. But it's a consciousness. Just like in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes who is a real sannyasi. He says, well, one who works as he, as he is obligated and who is detached from, the, resu from the, the work, detached from the results. He's not trying to enjoy the results. He said, not somebody who, who lights no fire and performs no work. You see, there, there's karma sannyas. Karma sannyas, they give up work. That is not what we want. We, want, we take sannyas to work more. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas to take more responsibility. There was one man, he came to Prabhupada and he said, Swamiji, I want to take sannyas. Prabhupada said to him, why? He said, oh, I have a wife and four children at home. It's terrible. So, of course, Prabhupada did not give him sannyas. Because that's not sannyas. Sannyas is not to give up responsibility. Sannyas is to take more responsibility. To take more responsibility for the service of Krishna and enlightening more and more people about Krishna consciousness.
So that is the real duty of the sannyasi. And we're encouraging people in that way. Everyone become a sannyasi. Everyone. You don't have to change your dress, but if you have that consciousness, then you're sannyasi. Just like Prabhupada said about one devotee, there was one devotee, he was distributing books. And he was distributing every day many books of Krishna conscious literature. He would go into the airports in the USA and he would distribute books to people in the airports. So some de devotees, they said to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, we should give that devotee sannyas. He's so dedicated, he's working so hard. And Prabhupada said, he said he's, he's doing more than any sannyasi. Prabhupada recognized him, that he was, he's doing more than sannyasi. And later on, he did, Prabhupada did give, give him sannyas. But uh, initially, Prabhupada said, he's already doing more than a sannyas. So the idea is that sannyasis are needed, but they should be qualified. They shouldn't be ignorant people who don't know Shastra. They have to teach the Shastra. Just like Ramananda Roy talked with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a sannyasi and he was born in a Brahmana family. He'd taken sannyas in the line of Shankaracharya, but he was a Vaishnava sannyasi. And he met with Ramananda Rai, and when they met together, Lord Chaitanya put questions to Ramananda Rai. And Ramananda Rai objected. He said, you know, I'm a householder. I'm not even born in a Brahmana family. Why are you asking me? You're the Brahmana and you're the sannyasi. I should be questioning you. But Lord Chaitanya told him, Kiba vipra, kiba nasi, sudra keni nai, ye Krishna tattva vet, se guru hai. It doesn't matter what ashram you're in. You may be a Brahmana or a, 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 a sudra or whatever. That's not important. But if you know the science of Krishna, that is important. If you know the science of Krishna, then you should become a spiritual master and you should save the world. So this is the principle. Become the guru. Usually gurus are sannyasis. But everyone should become guru. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has said, but you, sh you have to know the science of Krishna. You have to know Krishna Tattva. Then you can be guru. Then you're sannya. You have to know the science of Krishna consciousness. And you, if you read Prabhupada's books, certainly you can learn the science of Krishna. Everything is there in the books. You read Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and Chaitanya Charitamrita. These, uh, these books are so rich in knowledge that if you read these books carefully and understand them, then teach it and explain it to others. It's not enough to just read them ourselves. We, we have to discuss and we have to explain to others. Just like every morning we're having class here, we're speaking on Srimad Bhagavatam every day in every center of ISKCON. If you go, I, I just came this morning from Ramapur. Ramapur, we have a small center there. and We had Bhagavatam class there. It, we had class there 5, uh, 5.45 to 6.30. So I just finished one class there and I came here. We're having class here. From here, I'm going to Atarpur. In Atarpur, we'll have class there. We have a center in Atarpur. This is going on. This is our business in the Krishna consciousness movement. Speaking about Krishna and discussing the topics of Krishna. Everyone needs to hear. And by hearing, we get purified and we can awaken our Krishna consciousness. So we have to understand the value, the importance of this Krishna consciousness message. It can save us from the greatest danger. Neha bikramana shosti pratyavayona vijate swalpamapyasya dharmasya trayate mahatobayat. Bayat. 
danger. What's the danger? The danger is now we have the human body. If we don't use it properly, next life we will become an animal. We see so many dogs in the streets here in India. Do you want to be in the, the dog body? That's what happens if we don't use the human life properly. We take birth in the lower species of life. So we should, we should very, be very conscious of our obligation and responsibility. Don't be a dvipada pashu. Don't be a two-legged animal. The animals eat, sleep, mate, and defend. And if we only eat, sleep, mate, and defend, what is the difference between us and the animal? So we have to understand the value of this human life and make the best of it. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Are there any questions? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandwa Pranam. Uh, thanks for giving the importance of what how we need to preach in the current days. But the one question comes in our mind that uh, whenever a jiva is taking birth in a family, and he gets the desire to spread the Krishna consciousness. He requests to their parents that I want to be a Brahmachari. So even though their parents know that devotional services is good to, uh, for the mankind, but they are still stopping that because of the attachment. Why it's happening so? Well, I wish I could hear what you're saying, Prabhu. It's not clear to me. Parents are not allowing. Uh -huh. Well, you can be a devotee at home. You don't have to leave the home. You can stay with your family and also practice Krishna consciousness. Srila Prabhupada never came and lived in the temple. Srila Prabhupada never lived as a brahmachari. He always lived with his family. Then later on, he became sannyasi. So you can also do like that. You can live at home. You live a normal life. Just like Raghunath Das. Raghunath Das, one of the Goswamis of Vrindavan. Initially, Raghunath was born in a very wealthy family. His, his uncle and his father, they were very, very wealthy. They were maintaining all the brahmanas of Bengal. They were so wealthy. So Raghunath Das, however, had no desire to stay in the family life. He wanted to go and be with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So he would run away from home and his parents would bring him back and kept and bring him back again. And so they got him married to a very beautiful young woman and they thought, young girl, very beautiful, she will help to keep him in family life. But still, he was not happy. Still, he wanted to go and be with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So then, he went to Lord Chaitanya personally, and he asked Lord Chaitanya about it, and Lord Chaitanya sent him home. And he said, you go home. He said, don't be a sahajya. Don't take everything so cheap. You go home and act like a normal person, and keep Krishna in your heart. And in this way, become Krishna conscious. So Raghunath Das initially was told like that by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that you go home and act like a normal person and do what's required in the family affairs. You know, maybe your parents want you to work, then you should do it. Whatever, you know, do whatever's required. But keep Krishna in your heart. And you can be Krishna conscious. It's not that because you're staying at home, you can't be Krishna conscious. If you want to be Krishna conscious, you can. You get the books, you read the books, you get some beads, you chant on the beads. Why you cannot be Krishna conscious at home? Your family don't want you to be vegetarian? Are they vegetarian? No? So then you have to cook your own food then. You have to tell them, all right, I will stay at home, but I want, I'm going to cook my own food. 
You cook for yourself. And make some food, cook some vegetarian, offer it to Krishna. So there are many other people in similar situations. You have to adjust everything. You want to uh, just be, be careful to try to keep yourself in Krishna consciousness. It's not that everybody has to come and live in the temple, and it's not that only people living in the temple are Krishna conscious and devotees. You can be at home and also more Krishna conscious than people who may be here. So it's, it's not, doesn't depend on physical location. In any situation you can become Krishna conscious. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's followers, most of them were grihastas. And Lord Chaitanya would quote the verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam. There's a verse there in the Srimad Bhagavatam which says, Jane Prayatas to the Manta Eva, Jivanti San Mukaritam Bhavadiya Vartam, Stani Stita Shruti Gatantan Van Manobir. Ye praya so jita jito sitai lokyam. Lord Chaitanya liked this verse because this verse says, you stay in your position. Stani stita. You stay in whatever position you're in and hear about Krishna in the association of devotees. Lord Chaitanya went to Kurmakshetra. In Kurmakshetra, a Brahmana received him and fed Lord Chaitanya. And then when Lord Chaitanya was leaving, the Brahmana said to Lord Chaitanya, I can no longer tolerate the pains of material life. Take me with you. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu got angry at him and he told him, don't speak like that again. He said, told him, you stay where you're, you stay here, and wherever you go and whoever you meet, tell them about Krishna. And in this way you become a guru. Lord Chaitanya did not let people give up their duties or their responsibilities. You have some position, your family are naturally attached to you. They don't want you to be devotee. Okay. So you, you stay at home, you tell, I'll stay at home, but I have to practice Krishna consciousness. And I'm going to be vegetarian, you have to tell them. I have to be vegetarian, I have to get vegetarian food. I'm not going to take this non-vegetarian. If they want to eat it, that's their business. But you should make it very clear to them that you want me to stay at home, then I have my conditions. And if they can't agree to all of that, then you just have to leave home. You're not a young kid. You can stand on your own feet. If they cannot agree to basic principles like that, then you have no reason to remain there. Uh huh. Any other question? Yes, Prabhu. Rekish Maharaj, we are speaking about enthusiasm. We lose enthusiasm after some time. How can we keep that enthusiasm still our last end of our life? How to be enthusiastic always? Well, by just simply by being enthusiastic. You just, even though you may not feel enthusiastic, but if you just simply be, show enthusiasm, then that will help you. Enthusiasm, you know, come to the temple, dance and chant loudly, like that. Take part, dive into the, the program, into the kirtan, and in this way, just by being enthusiastic, you will develop that enthusiasm.
It's also good to associate with people who are enthusiastic. If you can be with other people who are enthusiastic, you can also become enthusiastic. Enthusiasm is contagious. It spreads. If you become enthusiastic, other people around you will also become enthusiastic. So you can inspire everyone. You become enthused, and everyone else also will become enthused. We go to the temple, and the devotees are having a big kirtan. You know, when you first come in the temple, you're down, and you're not feeling very... But you go in the kirtan, and they're chanting and dancing, and you chant and dance, and you also forget all the miseries, and you forget everything. So that's how it works, that's and how enthusiasm comes. Now, in the nectar of instruction, in the nectar of instruction, Upadeshamrita, an important book, uh, Srila Prabhupada, or Rupa Goswami has mentioned that enthusiasm is one of the six items which are necessary to advance in Krishna consciousness. He mentions about patience and determination as well as enthusiasm. And it's, they're very necessary. And Prabhupada said, in every endeavor, these things are necessary. And then Prabhupada also tells us what he considers enthusiasm to be. He said, enthusiasm is, uh, util is utilizing our intelligence in Krishna consciousness. That we, we use our in acting intelligently in Krishna consciousness. That is enthusiasm. When you use your intelligence in Krishna consciousness. So in enthusiasm is not just being reckless and being wild and carefree, but it's utilizing our intelligence for the service of Krishna. So we do want to be enthusiastic. It's an important quality. And Prabhupada appreciated that in our the devotees in our Krishna consciousness movement that they had a lot of enthusiasm. So Prabhupada always encouraged the devotees to keep that enthusiasm and to use it for the service of Krishna. And material life people are enthusiastic for their sense gratification. But a devotee is enthusiastic for Krishna's service. All right, yes. Any other question? Okay, so we will stop here today. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Go back to Brinda Ki.